शैक्षणिक अनुसंधान परिषद के इस ऑनलाइन स्टडी सर्कल कार्यक्रम के अंतर्गत जिस पर कि आज का विषय जो चर्चा का है वह है गहन ज्ञान में मानसा और उसकी विविध धारणाएं आज के इस कार्यक्रम की अध्यक्षता कर रहे माननीय सदस्य सचिव प्रोफेसर सचिदानंद मिश्र सर भारतीय दार्शनिक अनुसंधान परिषद हम आपका हार्दिक अभिनंदन और स्वागत करते हैं इस कार्यक्रम में हम स्वागत करते हैं आज के इस कार्यक्रम में इस विषय को वक्ता जो इस विषय का चर्चा हम सब लोगों के समक्ष रखेंगे अपने उद्बोधन के माध्यम से डॉक्टर अनुभव वार्ष ने आप सहायक आचार्य दर्शन शास्त्र विभाग राजस्थान विश्वविद्यालय जयपुर से हमारे साथ इस कार्यक्रम में जुड़े आपका भी हम हार्दिक अभिनंदन और स्वागत करते हैं हम साथ ही साथ स्वागत करते हैं इस आभासीय पटल पर जुड़े हुए हमारे साथ मैडम पूनम सिंह कृष्णया जी और भी सभी अन्य शोधार्थी और अध्यापक और प्राचार्यगण विविध विश्वविद्यालयों से जो हमारे साथ जुड़े हैं और डॉक्टर जयशंकर सिंह वरिष्ठ सलाहकार भारतीय दार्शनिक अनुसंधान परिषद एक बार पुनः आप सभी लोगों का हार्दिक अभिनंदन और स्वागत करते हैं जैसा कि आज का विषय है गहन ज्ञान मीमांसा और इसकी विविध धारणाएं ज्ञान मीमांसा निश्चित रूप से ज्ञान का सिद्धांत दर्शन शास्त्र की प्रमुख शाखा के रूप में मान्य है और जो ज्ञान को एक युक्तिबद्ध तरीके से जानने का अध्ययन करने का हम सब लोगों के समक्ष रखती है वही ज्ञान में मानसा के माध्यम से ज्ञान के उद्भव ज्ञान के स्रोत ज्ञान की परिधि और उसके विश्लेषण पर अलग अलग दृष्टि से अध्ययन किया जाता है दर्शन शास्त्र का यह एक महत्वपूर्ण विषय जो ज्ञान ज्ञान मीमांसा के माध्यम से है और इसी को आज के इस कार्यक्रम के तहत इस स्टडी सर्कल के कार्यक्रम के तहत इस चर्चा को शामिल किया गया है ताकि इसके अलग अलग विविध धारणाएं जो है ज्ञान मीमांसा की उन पर भी अध्ययन या जो भी विचार हमारे बीच उपस्थित हमारे वक्तागण और हमारे अध्यक्ष महोदय इस संदर्भ में हम सब लोगों के समक्ष रखेंगे उसके माध्यम से हम जान सकेंगे कि और भी बहुत सारी ऐसी धारणाएं हैं बहुत सारे अलग अलग ऐसे कंसेप्शन हैं जिसके और भी हम एपिस्टोमोलॉजी को देखा जाना और समझा जा सकता है निश्चित ही ज्ञान मीमांसा का ध्येय सत्य के स्वरूप को समझकर सत्यता और असत्यता के भेद को विश्लेषित करना है बहुत ज्यादा समय न लेते हुए मैं आमंत्रित करना चाहती हूँ इस विषय पर अपने विचार व्यक्त करने के लिए डॉक्टर अनुभव वार्षण जी को वे हम सब लोगों के समक्ष इस विषय पर अपने विचार रखें डॉक्टर अनुभव वार्षण जी सबको नमस्कार मेरी आवाज सुनाई दे रही है मैम जी हाँ आपकी आवाज सुनाई दे सर, रही है सर प्रणाम जी नमस्ते आनंद मानंद करम प्रसन्नम निज भाव युक्त ज्ञान स्वरूप योगींद्र मिड्यम भव रोग वैद्यम श्रीमद गुरु नित्यमहम नमा श्लाघास्पदम यद्यपि नेतरेशा कृति सैत उपहास योग्या तथा शिष्यगौरवेण पर सहस्रैह समुपासनीय एट द आउटसेट लेट मी एक्सप्रेस माय ग्रैटिट्यूड टू प्रोफेसर सच्चिदानंद मिश्र सर the honorable member secretary of the council and whom we all um, look as uh, towards uh, whom we all look as an exemplary scholar of indian philosophy and who has always inspired me personally so far as my studies in indian philosophy is concerned thank you so much sir uh, to give me uh, to uh, for having given me uh, this opportunity to initiate a discussion on a notion that was developed at the hands of some academic philosophers at my alma mater that is allahabad university i am also thankful to dr jay shankar singh ji dr pooja vyas ji uh, my prostrations my uh, reverential pranam to the guru parampara of allahabad university my teachers of depth epistemology professor jada shankar sir and professor hs upadhyay sir my param guru 
professor bishambhar pahi and professor sangamlal pandey i also find it obligatory to express my tribute to professor ramlal singh ji who left us uh, recently uh, my, i also express my greetings to uh, professor rakesh chandra sir uh, dr alok tandon ji uh, professor poonam singh ma'am and uh, other friends and scholars who uh, have joined this discussion now let me confess that it is difficult for me to speak on this topic uh, for multiple reasons uh, foremost is that it encompasses the ideas of my uh, grand teacher or param guru professor sangam lal pandey who coined the term depth epistemology and also it uh, encompasses in a way a long lineage of academic philosophers at allahabad university it is also difficult to initiate a discussion on the notion of depth epistemology because it is very different to the common understanding of the term epistemology and furthermore uh, since on a lighter note since all the exponents of depth epistemology are very much against a staunch and naive form of bahyarthavad and i am conscious that an eminent bahyarthavadi or nayaik uh, professor mishra is chairing the session so that makes me all the more apprehensive uh, about uh, the talk today uh let me also add that the purpose of this discussion is only to introduce the notion of depth epistemology to those who are not already aware of this conception by professor pandey and the book or rather the anthology authored by professor pandey so uh, different to what uh, the honorable director ma'am dr vyas introduce uh it it will not be as such you know a deliberation on traditional questions or 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 some traditional aspects of epistemology but rather a very different conception of epistemology which was initiated by professor sangamlal pandey so i propose to do the following uh three or rather four things in the next 45 minutes or so one is that i would like to introduce the notion of depth epistemology harping upon the prolegomena of professor pandey uh, to his anthology uh, two i would like to briefly summarize the views of the four thinkers who were included in his anthology that is professor p s barrel professor r d ranade professor arin call and professor ac mukherji uh, uh i i would also try to register some problems uh, associated with the notion of depth epistemology at the end of the talk and uh, uh, uh specify my own take on the same in brief so to begin with professor sangamlal pandey whom we all venerate as an unparalleled scholar of indian tradition edited a thin anthology entitled problems of depth epistemology in the year 1987 a professor pandey very ambitiously designates the term coined by him that is depth epistemology as synonymous to the allahabad school of philosophy now two claims are made uh, in this remark uh, one is that there was a systematic school of philosophizing at the department of philosophy at allahabad and two that it is depth epistemology which is the core and quintessence of that school now we need to examine both these remarks apart from his very important prolegomena to the anthology which summarizes his conception of depth epistemology there are four articles 
uh, each by Professor P. S. Burrell, Professor R. D. Ranade, Professor A. C. Mukherjee, and Professor Ramnath Kaul in the anthology. Uh, all these four thinkers were academicians of high repute in the uh, colonial period, and all of them were, of course, professors at Allahabad University. So, uh, 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 initiating a discussion on the notion of depth epistemology will also, in a way, uh, help us uh, address or revise our understanding of, of, of the history or historiography of contemporary Indian philosophy. I must also uh, uh, have a word on the persona of each of these four thinkers before I move on to their conceptions of depth epistemology and its various issues. Uh, Professor P. S. Burrell was the founder head of the department and an authentic and eminent authority on Greek and modern Western philosophy in his times. Professor R. D. Ranade was a legendary figure, a mystic and an eminent giant in the scholarship of Indian philosophy. Uh, Professor A. C. Mukherjee developed his own brand of transcendental idealism by making some advances upon both Kant and Adi Shankar. Sadly enough, the contributions of all these thinkers and, 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 and the very lofty scholarship of Professor A.C. Mukherjee uh, remains quite unsung till date. Uh, Professor Ramnath Kaul had an image of a Hegelian and a new Hegelian scholar in the department and in his writings, he tries to soften the divide between Hegelianism and Neo-Hegelianism. Now, we must uh, understand that while all these four thinkers differ on several leagues, Professor Pandey believes that each of these, uh, 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 all of them, they have for the focal point of their thought, depth epistemology. And all of them are idealists when it comes to mind-object relationship. All of them are concerned with the problem of criterion. And in all of them, the criterion is internal. I shall also try to show that uh, these thinkers had severity of differences on the questions of criterion, status of intuition, and analysis of knowledge. Now, how does Professor Pandey uh, define depth epistemology? In his introduction, he defines depth epistemology as an analysis of transcendental knowledge or a theory of knowledge which investigates the foundations of human experience or human knowledge. And in order to clarify the notion of depth epistemology further, he tells us what he understands by surface epistemology as different to depth epistemology. So as per him, any analysis of knowledge which is sheerly concerned with object or objective knowledge or which is sheerly concerned with empirical knowledge or even with subjective knowledge or also such analysis of knowledge which treats all cases of knowledge as a coordination of object and subject are all instances of surface epistemology. As such, epistemic analysis in the ordinary course of its action, attempting to analyze objects of knowledge is an instance of surface epistemology. The two famous, well-known epistemological camps of modern philosophy in the West, the three formulations of criterion of truth, a realist system like Nyaya or an idealist system like Vigyanavad are alike termed as cases of surface epistemology by Professor Pandey. Why so? Uh, because as per Professor Pandey, they are all exclusively committed 
to either an analysis of inner mental state. And we are told by Professor Pandey that only such knowledge, which is both trans-objective as well as trans-subjective, in other words, such knowledge which is the presupposition of empirical experience, is the proper subject matter of depth epistemology. In other words, uh, uh, after, after, after going through uh, the anthology, one gathers that the transcendental and foundational elements of knowledge is the proper subject matter of depth epistemology. So in short, depth epistemology is an analysis of the transcendental and foundation of human experience or human knowledge. Some other tenets that characterize depth epistemology uh, as per Professor Pandey include, number one, centrality of criteriology, number two, centrality of vision or intuition or anubhava, number three, centrality of self-knowledge, and number four, a tiered conception of knowledge or two levels of knowledge. So to begin with criteri criteriology, uh, as per Professor Pandey, one of the most basic questions of depth epistemology concerns criterion of truth and criterion of genuine knowledge or criterion of our knowledge concerning the transcendental grounds of our experience. Criterion is equated with Swarup Lakshan or decisive piece of evidence. And all the four thinkers of Professor Pandey's anthology uh, revolve somehow their epistemic contemplation around the problem of criterion. Now, there are certain problems when we equate the notion of depth epistemology with criteriology or Lakshan Mimamsa and Professor Ambika Dutta Sharma in his very beautiful article on depth epistemology, which was included in a co-memorial volume on Professor Pandey, has pointed out in detail what would be the problems if we equate uh, depth epistemology with criteriology. I shall come to this later on. Another important characteristic of depth epistemology is centrality of a vision or an immediate apprehension of truth or knowledge. And this runs in common in all the depth epistemologists. Uh, 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 I shall try to show uh, that in different ways, all the four thinkers and Professor Pandey purport a direct experience or an aparokshanubhuti as the ashesha praman or charama praman. So, while all the ordinary pramanas are termed as shesh praman, uh, it is the criterion uh, which, 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 or aparokshanubhuti, which qualifies as the ashesh praman. Now, this is something which is very akin uh, to the distinction between uh, uh, vyavahar tattva vedak and paramarth tattva vedak pramanas by Dharmaraj in the very first line of the seventh Pariched of Vedanta Paribhasha. Another important feature of depth epistemology is that self-knowledge is recognized as the most significant form of knowledge in all the depth epistemologists. Associated to this is their identification of self-knowledge as something self-evident or swayam prakash. Self-knowledge for all of them is immediate and trans-reflexive. So depth epistemology, in a way, turns epistemology from the extraneous or from the realm of objects to the realm of the foundational subject of human experiences or to the inward realm. Treatment of consciousness is rendered pratyangmukhi. Uh, so uh, uh, that 
because all the depth epistemologists are concerned with sakshi chetana or foundational consciousness instead of the vritti chetana or the modular consciousness. A tiered view of knowledge or two levels of knowledge is yet again something to which all the depth epistemologists subscribe. So they uh, uh, accept uh, or rather they propose a distinction between empirical and transcendental knowledge, something which we have seen uh, before. Empirical knowledge concerns an analysis of, of, of prameyas or an analysis of objects of knowledge and transcendental knowledge is concerned with an analysis of the transcendental presuppositions of knowledge situation. Uh, in the later works of Professor Pandey, we are also told that likewise there are levels of depth epistemology as well. Now, some other features of depth epistemology include a tadatma between subject and object of knowledge instead of a coordination between the two. Absolutely no room for doubt or sanction. Now, we are aware that, that uh, the relationship between doubt and certainty has been a very contentious uh, issue uh, in the circles of epistemologists and the timeless contribution of, of Wittgenstein in his classic text on certainty. However, as per Professor Pandey, in depth epistemology, there is no room for doubt and an openness of knowledge situation. These are some minor features of depth epistemology and depth epistemologists. Now, let me offer a brief uh, summary of the three or four thinkers associated with the notion of depth epistemology. To begin with Professor P. S. Burrell, Professor P. S. Burrell in his essay, uh, which is entitled as The Criterion, uh, he dialectically establishes that in every man, a faculty to discern between non-sensible objects is the ultimate criterion of truth and epistemic matters. Professor Burrell suggests that in the classical maxim, man is a rational animal, the term rational also means inner and spiritual. And as such, an inward witness is the ultimate adjudicator of epistemic and axiological matters. He dialectically dislodges the popular views about criterion. Uh, those of the best heads, the older heads, the older heads means the tradition, many heads, which means the majority opinion, and the criterion of the wise heads, which means expert advice. He suggests that all external criterion are problematic in some way and the inner criterion of reason issues intuitively an infallible account of truth. And he cautions us that uh, this is not the protagorian kind of subjectivism. Why? Because an intuitive and infallible apprehension of truth is, as per Professor Burrell, the result of an arduous cross-examination of reason and its disjuncts by the individual subject. It is a natural light of reason, quite akin to the kind of intuition which we have in deductive systems, uh, which emanates by an inner expedition. A Professor R. D. Ranade, who uh, was an eminent Vedanti, and an erudite scholar of the Upanishadic tradition, a mystic himself. Uh, in his essay, uh, the doctrine of uh, the criterion starts by reasserting the Vedantin view uh, about grades of reality. And he questions that what would be the criterion to know the highest grade of reality. He also makes an important assertion before proceeding to his expedition to find the criterion. And the assertion is that it is an ontology or metaphysics which is at the base of an epistemic analysis. 
Uh, Professor Ranadi draws arguments from the history of ideas in both the Vedic and the Vaitandik tradition. He uh, borrows arguments from these traditions to reveal the fact of Pramanantar Bhav and to point out the flaws in more prominent Pramanas like Anuman and Pratyaksha. So for an example, he borrows the Upamard of Ramanuj for demolishing Pratyaksha. He borrows the Vaitandik arguments of Sri Harsh and Bhashyakar's views on, on Tarka Pratishthanat Sutra for the untenability of Anuman. And he points out in the end of his essay that it is Anubhav uh, which is the ultimate criterion or, 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 or uh, the mystic criterion of Anubhav, uh, an immediate first-hand intuitive apprehension of reality, a self-evident direct experience is the ultimate criterion as per Professor Ranade. Uh, Professor Ranade also demolishes the three popular theories of truth in the West, that is the theories of coherence, correspondence and utility or the pragmatic theory of truths. Uh, because as per Professor Ranade, in an empirical correspondence, the representation of reality can never be doubt free. Similarly, an ordinary coherence can never have perfect harmony. And in pragmatic view, the utility of one may depend on individual idiosyncrasies. On the other hand, Anubhav uh, has the pros of all the three theories in its fold. It gives us a direct access to reality. The knower, known and knowledge fuse in perfect harmony when we have such an experience and such an experience is beatific. That is, such an experience serves the highest possible utilities. So it is a mystical experience of reality, um, which is the ultimate criterion in Professor Rana Dev. The fourth, I'm skipping the third for the moment for a purpose. The fourth of uh, the thinkers included in the anthology, Ramnath Kaul, uh, in his essay, Coherence versus Dialectic, revisits the coherence theory of truth and introduces the idea of dynamic coherence. He suggests that at the hands of Bradley, truth became a self-developing system instead of a static coherence. Uh, Professor Call rejects the popular charge that Bradley backslides Hegel. Uh, because he feels that actually Bradley attempts to make coherence theory compatible with Hegelian dialectic. Uh, following Bradley, uh, for Professor R. N. Call, an intuitive grasp of immediacy is the ultimate criterion. Now, let us turn to the third thinker, uh, Professor A. C. Mukherjee. I kept him uh, uh, after the three, uh, I mean, I, I, I separated Professor A.C. Mukherjee from the other three because his analysis is in a way different to the previous three thinkers. Professor A.C. Mukherjee defers to the previous three thinkers in so far as his analysis of knowledge is not largely intuition centric. It, it does bring in intuition, but uh, uh, the larger part of his analysis does not have to do with intuition and concepts like mystical experience or so. Uh, the essay of Professor Mukherjee in the anthology, uh, Foundations of Knowledge, is in a way a summary of his philosophical program and also a summary of his two impactful monographs, Self, Thought and Reality and The Nature of Self. Uh, Professor Mukherjee lays down a kind of transcendental idealism which has been termed as an Advaitic emendation of Kant. Uh, the primary objective of Professor Mukherjee's philosophical enterprise, if uh, I am allowed to quote J. Garfield and Nalini Bhushan, who have uh, beautifully researched the literature of Professor A.C. Mukherjee, 
So as per them, the primary objective of Professor Mukherjee's philosophical program lies in establishing a Vedanta inflected transcendental idealism as an account of the nature of subjectivity and of the relation of mind to the world. Now, some important tenets of Professor Mukherjee's account of depth epistemology. Uh, in Mukherjee's understanding, the core and quintessence of Kantian response to Hume's skepticism consists in replacing a democracy of ideas by an oligarchy of ideas. These are terms which he borrows from Samuel Alexander. So we must have a word on this. What is a democracy of ideas? By a democracy of ideas, Professor A.C. Mukherjee means an analysis of knowledge wherein we do not uh, subscribe to a high hierarchy of the various factors involved in knowledge situation. That is, all the ideas or factors associated in our experience, with our experience, involved in a knowledge situation are on the same footage. So the I or the understanding which constitutes the nature is also another object of our knowledge in uh, a democracy of ideas. In an oligarchy of ideas, on the other hand, some factors are on a higher plane. Some factors are more important in, in uh, the high hierarchical structure of knowledge situation. So the unity of a perception is more important to the manifold of experience, or in other words, the subject, the knower is more important than the subject, uh, the, than the object of knowledge or the prameya. So, Professor Mukherjee has argued in the nature of the self that it is essential to identify that some principles are higher in the oligarchy of knowledge situation. The understanding which renders a unity to the manifold of a datum from outside is the most foundational and transcendental principle of knowledge and cannot be treated as just another object of knowledge. Uh, both the works of Professor Mukherjee focus on a triadic puzzle, uh, which would go as under. Uh, one, uh, that it is quite clear that we know ourself. Two, it is necessary that we know ourself in order that any other knowledge counts as knowledge. But three, it is also clear that we do not know ourselves as objects. Then in what sense and how is it that self-knowledge arises? The answer which Professor Mukherjee poses to this triadic puzzle is that such self-knowledge arises through uh, swaprakash or a self-illuminating experience. So it is in a pre-reflective and immediate awareness that such self-knowledge arises. So to quote Professor Mukherjee, self is not a category at all. And consequently, it cannot be said to be even a system or a relational whole, or again, a unity in difference. On the contrary, the self is the ultimate non-relational consciousness, which is necessarily distinctionless, unobjectifiable and immediate. As per Professor Mukherjee, an attempt to degrade the I to the level of an ordinary object of knowledge is a mistake or what he terms as the fallacy of transcendental dislocation. Now, this is again a jargon uh, coined by Professor Mukherjee, fallacy of transcendental dislocation would in simple words mean that when we uh, disregard or dislocate something which is actually a presupposition of our knowledge situation to an ordinary object of knowledge, we land into the fallacy of transcendental dislocation. A classic example of 
fallacy of transcendental dislocation or rather rather i should say an example wherein we are advised to avoid the fallacy of transcendental dislocation uh, comes from the ajwal ki uh, dictum vigyatara mare ke nirvijaniyat uh, uh, it might not be pointless for me uh, to uh, underscore that a similar example comes in the famous play of ravindranath thakur raja which is translated as the king of the dark chamber in english in the final section of the play the queen confesses to the elusive king that whenever she tries to have a glance of the king as an object uh, she uh, uh, she fails hopelessly it is only when she looks in her inner realms she has uh, a, a glance of the king so in metaphorical uh, way uh, tagore is highlighting the fact that that which knows everything else that should not be reduced into an ordinary object of knowledge now it is quite it is it is not just incidental uh, that it was this text of tagore which was recited by our darling philosopher wittgenstein when he was invited to deliver a lecture in the vienna circle so i think i should stop my uh, deliberation on professor ac mukherji here now let me register some problems uh, with the uh, notion of depth epistemology before doing so let me uh, recapitulate uh the summarizing features of the notion of depth epistemology so the notion of depth epistemology is identified as such with any epistemic enterprise which seeks to unfold the transcendental and foundational structure of knowledge in professor pande and the four thinkers cited by him the same lies in a recognition of a qualitative difference between the self and the object and also in an internal or immediate nature of the criterion a uh, professor pande cites in his hindi text gyani mangsa ke gudh prashna shankar and kant as two instances of depth epistemology uh, we understand why shankar but when it comes to kant he is careful enough to point out that such elements in kantian analysis which were dislodged later on for an example his illustrations of synthetic a priori judgment in mathematics and physics his numinal agnosticism are traces of surface epistemology in kant while his transcendental analysis his transcendental method identification of self as the transcendental original Uh, unity of pure apperception are elements of depth epistemology in kant so as uh, we we gathered that, that as per professor pandey's reckoning kant has uh, kant imbibes both the elements of surface and depth epistemology in his analysis we are also told by professor pandey that the internal criterion in thinkers ranging from spinoza to bradley and other idealist thinkers in the western tradition the mystical bent of medieval poets like kabir and nabhadas are all cases of depth epistemology uh, uh, such citations are made by professor pande in his hindi text gyan mimamsa ke gur prashn now some problematic issues that crop up in my understanding from professor pandey's formulation of depth epistemology um, let me let me highlight some of them so uh, foremost is a question that might be pertinent to the historiography of contemporary philosophy uh, a question arises that if depth epistemology is to be equated with the so called allahabad school of philosophy something which professor pandey does then why do we see no significant progress in the notion of depth epistemology from the year 1953 1953 is the year in which professor arin call the last of the four thinkers published his paper 
So from 1953 to the year 1987, 1987 is the year in which this anthology was published, we see no significant progress in the conception of depth epistemology. And ever since, after the year 1987 also, when the idea was officially formulated and propagated by Professor Pandey, we see no progress at all in this conception. So in, 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 uh, given uh, these facts, is it at all proper to identify the notion of depth epistemology uh, with the Allahabad School of Philosophy? This is a question which we need to examine. Uh, adding to this question, uh, 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 another question arises that will the four thinkers who have been pigeonholed with the idea of depth epistemology, will they agree to such categorization? So we do need to make a proper analysis of the thinkers who have been uh, 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 ascribed as, as depth epistemologists by Professor Pandey. We need to appreciate their real concerns before branding them as depth epistemologists. Now, there have been attempts uh, uh, to understand depth epistemology, uh, which have resulted in conflicting opinions. I might point out some of them. Uh, Professor R.C. Sinha, the erstwhile chairperson of uh, the council, in a talk which he presented to us when we were students at Allahabad University, termed depth epistemology as sublime epistemology. And he beautifully associated it with the ideas of K.C. Bhattacharya. Uh, Professor Gopal Sahu, another faculty member and my teacher at Allahabad University, in a paper suggests that depth epistemology is actually a misnomer. Now, so far as my understanding is concerned, I believe that there is a need to differentiate, to discern the analysis of the four thinkers. Uh, it is very clear that while in Professor Ranade, the culmination of his epistemic analysis is in mysticism, in Professor P.S. Burrell, the intuition is very different to the kind of intuition which Professor Ranade talks. Uh, in, in Professor Burrell, the kind of intuition which we get is akin to the intuition of mathematicians and logicians. In Professor A.C. Mukherjee, we find a more careful and mature analysis of some serious epistemic problems. And as I pointed out perhaps before, for the larger part of his uh, 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 epistemic contemplation, he is not focused on notions of mystical experience and intuition and likewise. So it is important to understand that there is a difference between transcendental analysis of knowledge and a mystical approach to epistemic questions. We should not confuse these two. So there are inner variations in depth epistemology tradition, something which even Professor Pandey has hinted in his Hindi text, Gaur Prashni. We need to discern the inner variations in the conception of depth epistemology. The most important problem uh, which I uh, face when I try to form a picture of depth epistemology to myself uh, is that in the ordinary parlance, what we understand by epistemology is an analysis of such knowledge which is veridical or which is at least discursive. However, if a mystical experience, Anubhav, is the final import in Professor Ranade, and some form of intuition or the other crowns the discussion in all other depth epistemologists, then we need to question that is depth epistemology in its totality actually a type of epistemology? That is how much epistemological is depth epistemology? Uh, most importantly, the analysis of Professor Ranade. So is not Professor Pandey trivializing the boundaries between epistemology and mysticism by his account? Now, there are some alternative voices in contemporary epistemology, which may supplement the weaker or objectionable portions of depth epistemology. Uh, of late, there have been voices in epistemology circles, 
where in we are told that veridical knowledge or discursive knowledge is not the final import of epistemology so just to cite an instance uh, a thinker like miranda fricker who authored uh, a text which is now a classic uh, epistemic injustice uh, uh, fricker tells us that an attempt any attempt to demolish an epistemic claim without a case sensitive evaluation is a case of epistemic injustice as such our obsession with veridical knowledge and realistic biases which lead us to question the tenability of inner criterion or the validity of a mystical experience will be termed as a case of epistemic injustice by miranda fricker so we can supplement the notion of depth epistemology the weaker variants of it by importing some contemporary voices uh, so to conclude a pertinent import of professor pandey's conception of depth epistemology lies in making us question the limitations of traditional analysis of knowledge and in reiterating that not all our epistemic concerns are veridical and discursive uh i rest my case here thank you very much dhanyawad anwar ji bahut hi acha aapka sargarvik vyakhyan raha question ke liye khula hai koi prashn karna cha rahe ho to also a great amount of uh, scholarship that you have spent on also looking at uh, baril ranade call and ac mukji uh, but i think that you know uh, some things which you need uh, in your comments uh, sure, sure. could be stronger one is uh, the old question i think uh, uh, let me begin from the last one you asked a question that you know why is it that from 1953 to 87 when the book is finally published you find uh, no development i think one possible answer is that you know it is uh, at that time when uh, the two major books uh, got get published uh, classics in analytical philosophy and uh, by uh, the and uh, both by pap and uh, linguistic turn and uh, the indian readers are able to read that and allahabad university then gets a very strong kind of analytical turn as well so you have people like uh, all your teachers you know professor so say and professor right. devi and all of these people and even professor pandey i think they get more uh, inclined towards looking at the um, uh, whole issue uh, more analytically so perhaps the development of analytical philosophy in india and especially in um, allahabad university has something to do with the fact that these questions which were earlier model primarily in the um, model of uh, <coughs> an exposition of uh, vedanti ideas uh, get a little um, not set back but a uh, re uh, rethink uh, the other question which i wanted to ask is this which i think i have a very standard question which i have asked professor pandey himself also this whole thing at the when he looks at um, kant and uh, shankaracharya and also especially in the idea of the self uh, the transcendental structure of knowledge and you look at the transcendental unity of a perception the transcendental unity unity of a perception is very very clearly talking about the logical presupposition of exactly knowledge. exactly right right and so the subject is the logical subject and in the third section of the dialectic there is a very clear kind of an indication how he rejects everything that sangamlal um, pandey ji and shankaracharya want to establish right right right, right. in the dialectic there is a, a 
clear section giving you that how the unity of Para, the paralogism of substantiality. The paralogism that clearly denunciated. So I don't know, it's, it, it surprises me no end how uh, the, the, then, and in uh, for a very long time we know that the distinction between transcendent and transcendental, which is so fundamental to uh, Kant, Kant uh, is here being uh, not taken seriously. Exactly. And also I think one of the best ways to give uh, uh -huh. uh, honor to a scholar is actually to take him seriously and to criticize him threadbare. So uh, Plato gets his best appreciation from Aristotle by being taken seriously and rejected uh, in many ways and transformed. Uh, in India too, I think I think one of the best ways in which we could actually respect Professor Sangam Lal Pandey is to take him seriously and to say that, you know, the kind of enthusiasm that he shows in the comparisons of uh, Kant and uh, Shankar are to be taken more uh, carefully. The other thing is, when Baril talks about the inner and the spiritual as the idea of reason, uh, when uh, <coughs> then this kind of a mystery mongering is troublesome. Similarly, in Rana Day, the rejection of the three criteria of knowledge, uh, three criteria of truth, uh, again needs to be seen with other people, like, say, for instance, Michael Dummett or Frege. That may more, more so Frege, that the three theories of uh, truth do not quite see the connection between the idea of meaning and truth as interlaced with each other. Now, in case of uh, Sangam Lalji also, who's responding in the Indian idiom, the question would be, if you look, look at the Nayayaks who are saying that whatever is nameable is knowable, whatever is knowable is nameable, and then as against them, you have the Vedantins who do not believe the same, and they engage with each other, then what happens to a theory of truth and meaning, whether at surface or at depth? Because the two are not uh, are rec not recognizing uh, the same kind of a phenomena with the same kind of availability. Hmm. So that I think needs to be taken very seriously. Also, this swaprakash that no knowledge is swaprakash and self effulgent, etc., etc., is so troublesome. And this kind of a subjectivity that he, they are trying to um, um, is so reminiscent of the Krekigardian story that all the analytical philosophers and the old people are absolutely um, very uncomfortable, not only for philosophical reasons, but also for other reasons, which are cultural and political. And if Professor Pandey and all these people are trying to say that depth epistemology has something deeper in the sense for the self and also for society at large, because the claim is not that depth of epistemology is something to swantify and for the self. They're saying that the neglect of depth epistemology and concern for consciousness is also detrimental to the larger uh, society, which does not take this seriously. As opposed to that, the analytical tradition would say that this kind of a depth epistemology, what you are saying, which concentrates on a mystical self, which is available only to the self and has its own self effulgence is in fact very dangerous because this could be the self-effulgent subjectivity of a Nazi and of Hitler. And we are very, very scared of that. We have historical damages coming out of that. Therefore, I think we need to look at all these people with, uh, and, and I'm not in no one way trying to discredit the people. What I'm trying to say, to say that that when we, we look at these people of such a scholarship, especially like uh, Mukherjee, Rana Day, uh, and the others, it would be very important for us to, to tell them that, you know, you are right, but most of your statements are really in the form of declarative sentences. The argument is thin. The argument is inconclusive. The rejection of argument is even more dangerous. So I, will, I, I think that as a young, Man, uh, you would exercise uh, more courage and forthrightness as compared to an old man like me. <laughs> Your response. 
Thank you very much, sir, for some very uh, thought-provoking comments, rather. Uh, so, the least that I could understand, let, let me respond one by one to some of your uh, comments. You see, uh, so far as uh, you are trying to explain that why did we not have enough progress from the year 1953 or 1987 onwards, it's well taken that because we now experience a lot of analytic thinkers in the department. But in that case, that is my precise uh, submission, that in that case, it would be very improper for Professor Pandey to equate the notion of depth epistemology with a so-called Allahabad school of philosophy. That is one thing. Now, I cannot agree more with you on, on, on so far as uh, the Kantian assertion of paralogism of substantiality is concerned. In fact, uh, whenever I, 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 uh, I, I undertake a venture in, in a Dvaitic tradition, I myself relate to this very much that the two senses of I, the logical I and the substantial I, we need to differentiate between these two when we are doing a dwait. And, 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 and somewhere they have, I must say, they have confused between the two senses of I. And this is a question which all of us we must seriously investigate so far as uh, our understanding of Advait is concerned, that does it actually, like Descartes, do the Advaitis also uh, commit a paralogism of substantiality? Uh, so far as uh, being uncomfortable with uh, the mystical uh, nature of, of, of I or self is concerned, uh, so perhaps I anticipated your comment when I tried to differentiate between, when I tried to stress that we need to differentiate between epistemology and mysticism. And if a mystical experience as best exemplified by Professor Ranade is the ultimate criterion, then in what sense uh, should we term depth epistemology as a type of depth epistemology? So that is also well taken. Now, but I have some disagreement with you so far as the cultural politics of, of, of Kierkegaard and, and, and other continental thinkers are concerned. You see, uh, similar uh, uh, concerns could also be raised with analytic thinkers. When they drift us, when they very successfully drift the concerns of philosophers and philosophy away from social and political issues. So uh, in, in a way, uh, the analytic tradition also uh, lands us in, the similar, in a similar forte, which is far away from real life concerns. So uh, uh, <laughs> that, is a, that, that is again an issue which we need to seriously investigate that how, how, how much politically motivated the two traditions were. I mean, some scholars, they are of the view uh, that uh, 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 behind implanting the analytic tradition in uh, the soils of, of a colony like India, there were uh, some, some, some political reasons behind this as well. Uh, may I okay. ask a simple question, Jai Shankar ji? Ji, 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 but one fundamental question comes to my mind. When knowledge is concerned, how can a system which depends so much on subjectivity, which cannot be shared or verified or tested in, a, in scientific terms, be called epistemology at all? <clears throat> because that, uh. that, 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 the knowledge the definition of knowledge becomes so so singular that uh, I think this this goes um, whether you accept it or not, but it is mysticism. Dr. And Dr. as far as the other tradition goes, let me mm -hmm. just complete. 
Sure, uh, thank there you. are thinkers like uh, uh, you can say uh, who do not believe in big I, but they still believe in the role of consciousness uh, in, in 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 knowledge, in, in verifying, in testing, in 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 in, in, in just like uh, I would say there is a, there is a long uh, phenomenological tradition uh, which may not agree with this type of just consciousness and there is a pre-reflective consciousness even in thought it is there but why to glorify it so much thank you dr tandon i tried to anticipate the first of your question uh, i myself agree with this concern of yours that when it comes to the ordinary understanding of epistemology the traditional sense of epistemology or rather every understanding of epistemology uh, we understand by epistemology an analysis of such knowledge which is veridical which could be demonstrated huh? but if we are dragging in things like mystical experience then we have to question this that in what sense depth epistemology is categorizable under the banner of epistemology. So I already submitted this, that perhaps we are trivializing uh, the boundaries between epistemology and mysticism by this account. However, however, I also submitted side by side uh, that there are enough concerns on this and there are question marks on our traditional obsession with, with, with veridical knowledge, with discursive knowledge. So we need to take that also into account. So far as the glorification of pre-reflective consciousness is concerned, uh, the thinkers whom uh, Professor Pandey has included in the anthology, they are not just talking about pre-reflective consciousness. Uh, they are talking about reflective consciousness more than the pre-reflective pre domain of consciousness. However, as, as Professor Chandra pointed out, Sometimes they do make a jump from the logical I to the I which inheres in space and time. This is to be questioned. This is an open question. So, 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 and, and that, that, that of course is a weaker point of this conception. That is, that is something to which I also agree with you. Uh, so we do need to, we do need to dis differentiate between mysticism and epistemic analysis. But there is, there is an important submission uh, by Professor Pandey and, and other depth epistemologists that we cannot ignore that in the traditional analysis of knowledge, we have had a kind of obsession or an exclusive obsession with Prameya or object of knowledge. They are trying to, uh, 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 they are trying to revert the flair of epistemology towards the subject of knowledge. That is their submission. Thank you, thank you very much, Anubhav. Uh, I, 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 I like. Uh, oh, one minute. I like your comment on uh, analytical philosophers also. So I must submit to that. And but but what will be your take, final take on this just epistemology? I think you can answer the question. Then you. No, you see, uh, Doctor Tendon, I I my final take is uh, nothing is final for that matter. My ad hoc take is that, first of all, we need to differentiate the strands of thinkers like Professor A.C. Mukherjee, who are not so mystical in their analysis of knowledge, and then thinkers like Professor Ranade, for whom mystical experience is the final criterion. First of all, we need to differentiate amongst these thinkers who have been categorized as depth epistemologists by Professor Pandey. And next, we need to inquire that uh, 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 is our analysis of knowledge, is it, uh, are we supposed to restrain it to an analysis of object itself? So this is a question which needs investigation. Anubhav, can I uh, just ask you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir. Anubhav, one small thing that I would like you to, um, I was just looking at these things when you said that uh, uh, you begin, the whole idea of uh, thing begins with a Lakshana Mimansa, mm -hmm. that what is the uh, uh, criteria of truth. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And then uh, a certain kind of a centrality of a Paroksha Anubhuti. The third is about the self-effulgence or Swapakashta of that, and then a tired conception of reality. 
Now, um, I was wondering that if we again want to take these people seriously, then uh, despite the fact that we for a very long time uh, tried to have a more logical uh, conception of the self and more self-restraint, now in the past few years, you find that uh, these consciousness studies people are talking about qualia and talking about, you know, the first person singular uh, certainty about my own existence. Uh, now, that again has opened us uh, doors for us to go back to the discussion and see that, you know, the kind of human question that, you know, what kind of an experience that you have of the self, <coughs> which can't build upon, can be reinvestigated. So, taking the other stand, uh, do you think it is possible? that uh, these people, when you are looking at Professor Pandey and the others, they are saying that Gyanami Mansa, when you are trying to talk about Gyanami Mansa, then we have to talk about Gyan in, uh, and see the, how the term Gyan is being used. And then we say that, you know, what would be the Lakshana of Gyan? And in that, the Lakshana of Gyan, uh, as you said, that veridical knowledge is that it must be objective and available to all. It is objective. But since it is of a particular nature, therefore it will be available only to the subject, since it is the knowledge of the subject as its own object. So that kind of an investigation, I think, still opens uh, the possibility of it. I would really be very happy if I can get your paper. Because, uh, you know, this, uh, despite the fact that our initial reaction uh, is of a certain kind of a questioning, I think uh, we can go back to that mm -hmm. and see that what is the little space that they are wanting to carve out. And uh, because, you know, these people are well aware of Wittgenstein. So they know the private language, the private content. Um, uh, uh, is so, not so. the kind of thing that they're advocating. Mm -hmm. So what are they wanting to call our attention to? Can we still retrieve it? And uh, in that retrieval, do we get something which is valuable um, and which is not necessarily mystical in the sense, because, you know, even in mysticism, you remember when James talks about mysticism, he said that if I, if I have a mystical experience, it is authoritative for me. You have no business to tell me it's not authoritative. But the only thing is that I cannot claim that you should accept it on the ground that I accept it. So that kind of authoritativeness for the self and authoritative for the... So Paratana Pramanyavad has become so dominant that Swatana Pramanyavad uh, will have no space is also something which can perhaps be reinvestigated. So I just wanted some thoughts on you. I, I'm actually very uncomfortable in these uh, virtual mm -hmm. forums unless we are sitting with each other and looking at the real paper. Right, but right, some right. Uh, we love you very much and we respect your knowledge and we are looking forward all your brilliant observations. So, some no, response. No, thank, thank you, sir. So, so, I must specify one thing. Uh, when you are equating the entire uh, lineage or <coughs> debate of depth epistemology with uh, mysticism, I must point out that not all of them are mystic. <coughs> it, it, it is specifically Professor Ranade, uh, mm -hmm. who is out and out a uh, mystic, mm -hmm. and, and he, he, he inspired, uh, you know, several tales of, of, of his mysticism in Allahabad University, which are quite well known. Uh, 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 when it comes to Professor P.S. Burrell, he very specifically tells us that by intuition, he means the intuition which mathematicians and logicians get while doing their theorems in deductive uh, <laughs> logic. So, uh, uh, Burrell is not a mystic of the brand of Professor Ranade. When we come across the writings of Professor A.C. Mukherjee, it is only a very scanty portion of writings, his epistemic analysis, which focuses on the intuition aspect. And there too, his intuition is also very much akin to the kind of intuition uh, which was advocated by Professor Burrell. So uh, we, we should not brush aside the entire tradition. I mean, we should not equate all of them with mysticism per se. That is one thing. The second thing is uh, when uh, your 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 uh, apprehension uh, whether they have uh, addressed the questions of criterion of knowledge and in what sense they do criteriology their awareness of Wittgenstein etc. Uh, Professor Ambika Sharma Sharmaji 
wrote a beautiful paper on depth epistemology, which was included in a volume on Professor Pandey. He points out this problem of depth epistemology that whereas in his prolegomena, Professor Pandey has spoken high on criteriology, but in actuality, the four thinkers, they are not very much uh, concerned with criteria. They are concerned with criteriology, but criteriology does not occupy the central stage in their contemplation. However, I, I must add that, that when we go through the writings of Professor A.C. Mukherjee, he must be differentiated to the other three because uh, different to the other three, A.C. Mukherjee is out and out an epistemologist. In the writings of Professor A.C. Mukherjee, we get, you know, every pertinent, every perennial problem of epistemology gets a treatment and a very mature treatment at the hands of uh, Professor Mukherjee. We need to discuss this uh, separately. Uh, 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 for an example, the theories of truth coherence theory, correspondence theory, and, 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 and the utility theory. Uh, this is one of the three major concerns of his first volume, Self, Thought, and Reality. He discusses a great deal on the problem of qualia, on, 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 on the, uh, he, he, rather in a way, he anticipates some of the very prominent contemporary theories of consciousness. And we must remember that this is 1930s, yeah. So he's 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 uh, chronologically he is much anterior uh, to the contemporary debates of philosophy of mind and philosophy of consciousness. But it is to his credit that he anticipates a lot of these. So uh, 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 for this, we need to uh, have a separate discussion on Professor A.C. Mukherjee. And 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 so far as uh, elements of knowledge and and differentiating. Uh, the various senses of jnana is concerned. This has been done by all of them. They, they are very much uh, uh, vociferous in differentiating uh, 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 what uh, we would call as empirical and objective and veridical knowledge with what they understand as foundational and transcendental knowledge. The best, the best example comes from uh, Dharmaraj, uh, who, who, who differentiates between two types of pramanas in, in Paribhasha famously, that uh, 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 a set of pramanas, they deal with the realm of Vyavahar. Huh? Uh, and, and, and another set of pramanas, they deal with Paramartha. Professor Pandey terms the former as Shesha Praman and the latter as the Ashesha Praman. So there are certain things which are missing in, in, in their analysis, but then they have, they have contemplated on several of these issues. Ji. Mr. Ranbar, many, many congratulations uh, for delivering such a depthful and beautiful lecture on epistemology. Congratulations. Thank you, ma'am. It was just, just, just an introduction and I know I failed miserably in doing so. <laughs> Thank you for your generous gesture. No, no. <laughs> okay. Dhanyavad, Dhanyavad, Madam Ji. Or, koi pras, Professor Datta bhi naik jar? No. Bohut, bohut Dhanyavad. Sir, aapne ek achha व्याख्यान दिया इसके प्रश्न भी बहुत हमारे बीच में सीनियर प्रोफेसर लोग उठाए उसका जवाब भी वो सुचारू रूप से दिया अब इस कार्यक्रम में मैं अध्यक्ष उद्बोधन के लिए परिषद के माननीय सदस्य सचिव प्रोफेसर सचिदानंद मिश्र से अनुरोध करूंगा कि इस अध्यक्ष उद्बोधन के लिए प्रोफेसर सचिदानंद मिश्र नमस्कार के बाद बहुत अच्छा लेक्चर सुनने को मिला बहुत-बहुत धन्यवाद और हमारे शुभकामनाएं आपके साथ है और ऐसे ही आप नए नए रिसर्च करते रहो हम सब का आशीर्वाद आपके साथ धन्यवाद सर प्रोफेसर सज्जनों सर जी नमस्कार समादरणीय विद्वत्जन और आज के विशिष्ट वक्ता प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर अनुभव वार्षणी जी ये बड़ा अच्छा व्याख्यान था बहुत महत्वपूर्ण विषय पर महत्वपूर्ण विषय को जिस तरीके से अनुभव वार्षणी जी ने प्रस्तुत किया विगत 
आचार्यों को संगम लाल पांडे जी आर डी आन रानाडे अन्य आचार्यों को केंद्र में रखते हुए गहन तत्व में गहन ज्ञान मीमांसा की अवधारणा को जिस प्रकार से आपने प्रस्तुत किया उसके लिए आप बधाई के पात्र हैं शायद आपको लगे कि मैं नैयायिक होने की वजह से मुझे शायद यह सुविधा हो रही है परंतु गहन ज्ञान मीमांसा की समस्याओं से मुझे वाकई बहुत असुविधा महसूस होती है जी सर क्योंकि ऐसा लगता है कि ये ज्ञान मीमांसा तक तो बात ठीक है गहन ज्ञान मीमांसा की बात जब की जाती है तो ऐसा लगता है कि दो तरह की ज्ञान मीमांसा है जिसको कि आपने सरफेस एपिस्टमोलॉजी और डेफ्थ एपिस्टमोलॉजी करके आपने प्रस्तुत किया और सचमुच में ये जो सरफेस एपिस्टमोलॉजी है और जो डेफ्थ एपिस्टमोलॉजी है ये हमको याद दिलाती है कई चीजों की जैसे कि बौद्ध दर्शन में जिसको हम व्यवहार सत्य और परमार्थ सत्य की बात करते हैं जो अद्वैत वेदांत में जिसको कि हम व्यवहारिक व्यावहारिक सत्य और पारमार्थिक सत्य की बात करते हैं और इसी प्रकार से अन्य भी जो परंपराएं मतलब मूलतः अगर देखा जाए तो जितनी भी परंपराएं गहन तत्व ज्ञान मीमांसा की बात करती हैं उनका आशय कुल मिलाकर के ये रहता है कि जो हमको ये विविधता दिखाई पड़ रही है वो विविधता एक सरफेस के लेवल पर है और उससे गहराई पर जाएंगे तो हमको अनेकता दिखाई पड़ेगी और इस समस्या का कोई भी समाधान उस तरह से संतोषजनक नहीं दिखाई जा दिखाई पड़ता है जिसकी तरफ प्रोफेसर राकेश चंद्रा जी ने अभी संकेत किया क्योंकि हम इस चीज को लेकर के आगे बढ़ें कि केवल एकमात्र तत्व है जो कि चैतन्य मात्र है या जो और वो चैतन्य है इसके बारे में क्या प्रमाण है इसके लिए हम कहें कि भाई ये तो स्वयं प्रकाश है स्वयं प्रकाश होने का तात्पर्य हुआ कि हम सवाल को ही खारिज कर देते हैं कि उसके लिए किसी प्रमाण को मानने की जरूरत ही नहीं है नैयायिक के लिए स्वयं प्रकाश होना अपने आप में ही एक मतलब कहना चाहिए कि प्रश्न चिन्ह है वो एक ऐसी अवधारणा है जिसको नैयायिक कभी स्वीकार नहीं करते क्योंकि स्वयं प्रकाश होना ये मानने का मतलब ये हुआ कि उसको जानने के लिए हमको कुछ भी दूसरे साधन की जरूरत नहीं है हम उसको जान रहे हैं और वी बेग नो क्वेश्चन कोई प्रमाण मांगा नहीं जा सकता है उसको स्वीकार करके हमको आगे बढ़ना है अब किस तरीके अब समस्या ये भी है कि जब हम किसी दर्शन को लेकर के चलते हैं तो उस मतलब ये जो गहन ज्ञान मीमांसा की जो प्रॉब्लम है वो प्रॉब्लम कहाँ से खड़ी होती है शुरू कहाँ से होती है शुरू इसलिए होती है क्योंकि जब भी हम किसी दर्शन को लेकर के चलते हैं तो उसके लिए कुछ मूल प्रतिष्ठापनाएं हमारे सामने आती है उनको लेकर के हम आगे बढ़ने का प्रयास करते हैं और जब हम मूल प्रतिष्ठापनाओं को लेकर के आगे बढ़ने का प्रयास करते हैं तो फिर अब जैसे कि जिसको कि आपने कई बार संकेत किया वेदांत परिभाषा का वेदांत धर्म धर्म राजा धुरिंद्र की जो वेदांत परिभाषा है उस वेदांत परिभाषा का आपने जिक्र किया जहां पर कि तत्वावेदक प्रमाण की बात की जाती है और इस प्रकार से व्यवहारावेदक प्रमाण की बात की जाती है तो ये जो प्रमाण मीमांसी ग्रंथ है और इसको भी थोड़ा सा ध्यान देने वाली बात है कि अद्वैत वेदांत में जो प्रमाण मीमांसा है वो सेकेंडरी है प्राइमरी नहीं है और इसीलिए वेदांत परिभाषा में भी आप देखते हैं तो किस प्रकार से हमारी ज्ञान की प्रक्रिया होती है माने वो जो ज्ञान की प्रक्रिया है वो प्रक्रिया ही सचमुच में एक स्वीकृति को लेकर के आगे बढ़ती है कि ज्ञान मात्र ही है चैतन्य मात्र ही है और चैतन्य मात्र ही अगर सब कुछ है तो ज्ञान संभव कैसे हो पाता है व्यवहार के लेवल पर माने व्यवहार के स्तर पर किस प्रकार से ज्ञान संभव हो पाता है अगर सब कुछ चैतन्य है तो ऐसी स्थिति में तो मतलब किसी इंद्रिय व्यापार की जरूरत नहीं होनी चाहिए तो इंद्रिय व्यापार की क्या जरूरत है क्यों इस प्रकार से होता है इस बात को लेकर के वो प्रमाण मीमांसी विवेचन प्रारंभ होता है चलता है ये जो धर्म राजा धरिंद्र की वेदांत परिभाषा इत्यादि ग्रंथ है तो ये मतलब ये जो प्रमाण मीमांसा प्रस्तुत की जा रही है पूरी की पूरी प्रमाण मीमांसा एक तरह से व्यवहारिक लेवल पर ही प्रस्तुत हो जा रही है क्योंकि जो अन्य चीजें हैं माने 
जो अन्य वस्तुएं हैं जैसे घट है पट है या बाप व्यवहारिक जगत की जो वस्तुएं हैं उनको जानने के लिए वृत्ति की जरूरत पड़ती जिसको कि वो वृत्ति चैतन्य की बात करें क्योंकि अगर वृत्ति चैतन्य नहीं होगा तो इनको हम जान नहीं पाएंगे और वृत्ति चैतन्य के माध्यम से के माध्यम से होता क्या है अभेद की अभिव्यक्ति हो जाती है या आवरण का अभिभव हो जाता है अलग अलग तरीके की व्याख्याएं प्राप्त होती है तो ऐसी स्थिति में ज्ञान होता है अब आत्मा को जानने के लिए माने अन्य को जानने के लिए हमको प्रमाण की जरूरत है बट टू नो योर सेल्फ देर इज नो नीड ऑफ एनी प्रमाण मूल मूल समस्त बात यह है कि अपने आप को जानने के लिए हमको किसी प्रमाण की जरूरत नहीं है वो स्वतः प्रकाश है और उस स्वतः प्रकाश को भी जिस प्रकार से अद्वितीय परिभा परिभाषित करते हैं वो अपने आप में भी एक विचित्र सी बात है जैसे कि चित्त सुखी वगैरह में जहां पर कहा जाता है स्व प्रकाश की परिभाषा अवेद्यत्व सदी अपरोक्ष व्यवहार विषयत्व ये जो परिभाषा है अपने आप में भी बड़ी विचित्र है क्योंकि उसका पहला पार्ट ये बताता है कि वो अवै अवेद्य है वेद्य नहीं होता आत्मा वेद्य नहीं है अवेद्य है तो अवेद्य है माने जिसको कि अगर कहा जाए कि वो जाना नहीं जा पाता है हालांकि उनकी जो मतलब परिभाषा है उनकी जो शब्दावली है उसमें वो अवेद्य शब्द का प्रयोग करते हैं अज्ञेय शब्द का प्रयोग नहीं करते क्योंकि उनके यहाँ अज्ञे और अवेद्य में भी एक फर्क है फर्क करने का प्रयास कर क्योंकि जो स्वयं प्रकाश है वह भी अवेद्य तो है परंतु अज्ञ नहीं है तो इसलिए वो अवेद्य शब्द का प्रयोग करते हैं अवेद्य है अब न्याय के लिए अवेद्य और अज्ञ में भी कोई फर्क नहीं हो सकता है कि जो वेद्य है वो ज्ञ है वेद्य होना और ज्ञ होना दोनों सिनोनिम है पर्याय है इसमें कोई अंतर नहीं है तो अवेद्य होते हुए भी अपरोक्ष व्यवहार का विषय है तो अपरोक्ष व्यवहार विषय ही नहीं है बल्कि उसमें एक और बात में जोड़ते हैं कि अपरोक्ष व्यवहार योग्य है अपरोक्ष व्यवहार के योग्य है माने विषय ना होते हुए भी योग्य है तो इस प्रकार की जो परिभाषाएं आती हैं हमारे सामने उन परिभाषाओं को अगर आप लेकर के बात करते हैं ये कैसी ज्ञान मीमांसा है जिस ज्ञान मीमांसा में वो अवेद्य होता हुआ भी ज्ञान का विषय हो रहा है ये कतरी कतई समझ में नहीं आता खैर आपने जो विषय को प्रस्तुत किया व्यवस्थित तरीके से प्रस्तुत किया इसके लिए आप धन्यवाद के भाजन हैं और जो वक्ता जो यहाँ पर इस सर, स्टडी सर्कल में प्रतिभागिता कर रहे हैं वे भी धन्यवाद के भाजन हैं निश्चित रूप से आपके प्रस्तुतिकरण के माध्यम से जो यहाँ पर श्रोता हैं जो यहाँ पर प्रतिभागी गण हैं इनको सोचने के लिए कुछ रास्ता मिलेगा और इस सर्कल जो आयोजित की जाती है स्टडी सर्कल उसका मुख्य उद्देश्य यही है कि सोचने के लिए कुछ बात आगे बढ़े कुछ हम सोचें और कुछ दया जी ये बात कहते थे कहीं पर उन्होंने एक आलेख लिखा था कुछ हम सोचें कुछ आप सोचें तो कुछ उसी प्रकार से हम लोगों का जो यह कार्यक्रम है वह इसी तरफ बढ़ाता है कि आइए एक सोचने की एक नई दृष्टि क्योंकि जब हम विचार करते हैं तो उस विचार के आगे विचार आगे भी शुरू होता है तो आप सभी को बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद और इन्हीं शब्दों से मैं अपनी वाणी को विराम देता हूँ सर एक सर एक अंतिम चीज यद्यपि अध्यक्षीय उद्बोधन पर कुछ भी बोलना बहुत ही दुस्साहस की चीज हो सकती है मेरे लिए लेकिन आपका जो कंसर्न है कि जो अज्ञेय है या अवेद्य है अनाभिलाप्य है वो ज्ञान मीमांसा का विषय कैसे बन सकता है ये मेरे लिए भी बहुत ही बेचैनी उत्पन्न करने वाला विषय है और मैंने अंत में इस और संकेत करने का प्रयास भी किया था सर कि यदि रहस्यानुभूति इत्यादि को हम अंतिम निकष मान लेते हैं कोग्नेटिव एपिसोड्स का ज्ञान मीमांसा का तो फिर उस पर विमर्श कैसे संभव है और जब जिस वेन प्रोफेसर पांडे इज इक्वेटिंग और 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 प्रोफेसर राणा डे दे आर इक्वेटिंग द मिस्टिकल क्राइटेरियन विद द अल्टीमेट क्राइटेरियन इन एपिस्टेमिक इवेंट्स हाउ फार इज इट प्रॉपर टू कैटेगराइज देम एज एपिस्टेमोलॉजिस्ट यहाँ पर हम कहीं ना कहीं रहस्यवाद और ज्ञान मीमांसा के भेद की अनदेखी कर रहे हैं ये मेरा भी आग्रह था सर ठीक धन्यवाद बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद सर अब आज के इस कार्यक्रम के के विषय पे जो हमारे स्टडी सर्विल प्रोग्राम में आचार्य अनुभव वास्त्री जी ने जो व्याख्यान दिया वो बहुत ही सारगर्भित और बहुत अच्छा व्याख्यान रहा 
मैं परिषद की तरफ से उनको धन्यवाद देता हूँ इस कार्यक्रम में उपस्थित होने के लिए आभासी पटल पर प्रोफेसर कुसुम कुमारी प्रोफेसर पूनम सिंह प्रोफेसर सुभा मिश्रा प्रोफेसर राकेश चंद्रा प्रोफेसर दत्ता विनायक गोवा से प्रोफेसर कृष्णिया जी प्रोफेसर शिवानी शर्मा चंडीगढ़ से डॉक्टर क्षमा तिवारी डॉक्टर प्रशांत शुक्ला डॉक्टर जितेंद्र यादव डॉक्टर अजीत कुमार ठाकुर डॉक्टर संजय कुमार सिंह आलू डॉक्टर आलोक टंडन जी बहुत से लोग आभासी पटल पे हमारे पचास से ज्यादा प्रतिभागी इसमें सम्मिलित हुए मैं परिषद की तरफ से एक बार सभी को आप सभी के प्रति करता हूँ इस कार्यक्रम में आपने अपना बहुमूल्य समय दे करके कार्यक्रम का और इसे ज्ञान मीमांसा का एक आनंद लिया इसके लिए एक बार परिषद पुनः आपको धन्यवाद उद्बोधन के लिए परिषद के माननीय सदस्य सचिव प्रोफेसर सचिदानंद मिश्र सचिव में के प्रति आभार प्रकट करता हूँ जिन्होंने इतना बहुमूल्य समय निकाल करके इस कार्यक्रम को कार्यक्रम में हमारे निदेशक महोदया डॉक्टर पूजा व्यास जी को भी मैं आभार प्रकट करता हूं और इस कार्यक्रम में शैक्षणिक केंद्र के इंचार्ज प्रभारी श्री हेमंत भारद्वाज जी के प्रति मैं आभार प्रकट करता हूं और हमारे इस शैक्षणिक केंद्र से जुड़े सभी कर्मचारीगण मुकुल जी योगेश जी आनंद जी सभी लोग इस कार्यक्रम में तकनीकी रूप से जुड़े रहे हैं उन सभी के प्रति भी मैं आभार प्रकट करता हूँ इस कार्यक्रम में हमारे रंजय सिंह जी वर्धा विश्वविद्यालय से जुड़े हैं उनको भी मैं परिषद की तरफ से धन्यवाद देता हूँ आभार प्रकट करता हूँ एक बार पुनः आभासी पटल पर उपस्थित सभी प्रतिभागी और वक्ता मुख्य वक्ता महोदय को परिषद की तरफ से धन्यवाद और नमस्कार करता हूँ सर की अनुमति हो तो इस कार्यक्रम को यही पे समाप्त किया जाए धन्यवाद सर धन्यवाद सर नमस्कार नमस्कार थैंक यू सर नमस्कार सर